Looky there. And if we want to take that off anytime soon, we're going to be uh, we're going to be waiting. Welcome back everybody, Clint here today with Classic Firearms, here to bring another one of those classic science experiments. I'm just missing the uh, lab coat and the pit vipers, like you guys keep talking about down in the comment section. But today's video, it's all about this little guy. And no, this isn't something we found off of the uh, dark web. No, this is actually a very vital part of your DIAR. This is the buffer. Now, we keep getting questions all about builds and stuff like that, right? And congratulations on you beginning your build or building another or whatever it might be. And a lot of questions that we have gotten is, hey, what is the ideal buffer weight? <sighs> so we're gonna get into that today because that is a, that, that, that's a long story, right? And so we're gonna have a pretty fun video today where we take a look at extraction or ejection patterns. We're gonna talk about felt recoil and overall reliability of the firearm with different buffer weights. And what you'll see here shortly, I think will be a lot of fun. I'm excited to hop into it. But before we do, let's go ahead and talk about exactly what each buffer is that we have on the table and what is it, what is, why is it important? So whenever you pull the trigger on a gun or on the AR-15, the buffer system is what actually slows down the bolt and then pushes the bolt and bolt carrier back into place, stripping around from the magazine and chambering it, as you can see right here. What's happening is your buffer assembly, you'll see that there's a buffer right here, is captured by this one little pin, and then it is on a spring that you see. All right, that all just is its own little thing. That's it. That right there is actually a very vital part of this gun. Without it, well, you're only getting one round off, and then what's happening to the bolt after that might be saved for a different video just to see what happens. I'm not gonna use a really fun gun on that. But uh, anyway, that is all that does, is make sure that this piece pushes the bolt right here back in to its chambered position or to its seated position, all right? And that's all that does. So what are all the different buffers here and why do they exist? Your standard buffer that you find in a lot of guns actually is might even be heavier than this, but a lot of guns come with this, your simple carbine buffer. This guy here weighs about three ounces. From there, you have your H buffer. Your H buffer comes in at 3.8 ounces. Easy enough, right? After that, you've got your H2 buffer. And big shout out to PWS for providing these buffers today for this video. Thank you guys. And also unlimited ammo for the ammo we're about to shoot here. Thank you guys for providing that. So H2 comes in at about 4.6 ounces. From there, we've got a H3 buffer, which is about 5.1 ounces. And then we even have this heavy son of a gun. This is your H4 buffer at about 6.8 ounces. From here, they actually do get heavier. Uh, they even make pistol buffers, which can go all the way out to like eight plus ounces. And you might be thinking, well, pistols, you're talking like nine millimeter and pistol cartridges, right? Yes, I am. Why would you need such a heavy buffer if you're utilizing, well, not a rifle cartridge, but a pistol cartridge? That's because of the operating system that is inherently used on AR9s and the like the direct blowback system. You pretty much take away the direct impingement system and those gases traveling down the barrel or down the barrel and then through the gas tube and coming back out to the rifle. You eliminate all of that and you just have the violence and the pressures being generated from the primer being struck and that small explosion taking place right here in the chamber, forcing the bolt and bolt carrier back. Because of that, it's a much more harder felt recoil typically. And so you need a little bit heavier buffer to mitigate that. So this guy, all that does is just offer a little bit of resistance or quite a bit of resistance, about 6.8 ounces of resistance against the buffer when it's traveling back. And then it pushes the chamber of the bolt forward and well, chambers the next round. But there's also a rifle buffer. The rifle buffer typically found in more fixed stocks like these are about five ounces and a little bit longer. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. The rifle buffer, as you see right here, is uh, obviously a lot longer uh, than the rest of these and still not found on the dark web. So 
Those, like I said before, typically are on fixed stock guns uh, that have like the integrated buffer or there's just a much longer buffer tube is what I'm trying to go with, all right? So we might do a video breaking that down one day, but today we're just gonna be focusing on a 16 inch DI gun and a much shorter 10.3 inch gun and both still using direct impingement systems. So you're still having that gas coming back into the system. Uh, of course, PWS makes the long stroke piston driven system, which we might play with buffer for tubes and tuning and all that type of stuff at another date. Let me know what you would think about that. But anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead, head down range, and let's start trying out all of these different systems, both unsuppressed and suppressed, and see which one gives us the best performance, best recoil, or uh, felt recoil, I should say, and also to the best ejection pattern. That's one thing I'm gonna be paying attention to a lot. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and take a couple of shots. Now we'll do five shots through each buffer, through each gun, suppressed, unsuppressed, all that type of fun stuff. Let's go ahead and do five shots. Carbine, three ounces. Let's do it. Now it looks like my ejection pattern is pretty much right where I want it to be. So pretty good. Let's go ahead and get that next buffer in here. All right, we got the H buffer in here now, 3.8 ounces. Let's see how that feels. Didn't notice much of a difference, I'll be honest with you guys. So, uh, feels good. H2, which is what it comes with, next. Got the H2 on here, 4.6 ounces. Let's see how this one feels. I don't know if it's, there's, I know there's a change. I know there's a change in felt recoil, but I think it's changing so slightly after each buffer swap that it's, too minimal to notice. If I were to go from like the carbine to the H4 or whatever, as long as the gun cycles, then maybe I might notice that jump. But we're gonna throw the H3 in here, see how it runs. H3, 5.1 ounces. Let's see how this one works, if it works. I still can't notice much of a difference. I, I, I don't know at what point things are going to change or not, but I want to say, again, I'm kind of in a really upright shooting stance because I'm really trying to see how much of the recoil I can feel. I'm not getting down into it or anything like that. I'm just upright, just trying to see how much of the felt recoil I have. I, real feel, I do feel like that with the heavier buffers, I am getting slightly less muzzle rise. Is that, I don't, Let's continue on. Now we've got the H4. This is a 6.8 ounce buffer in here. I'm curious to see if the gun's even going to work right. Let's see. That felt really good, and it seems like it still ran just fine. So with that being said, I want to say that all the buffer weights are working great. Now, how would that work over a longer period of time once the system starts to get a little bit dirty, once some fouling starts to happen? Will we get more resistance because of carbon buildup in the DI system to where it will actually start to malfunction? That would be a much longer test and require a lot more ammunition than we have with us today but maybe something to think about in the future. Let me know what you think about that. But now let's go ahead and move on from this guy. Well, it's still this guy, but now we're moving to suppressed. Three ounce buffer, now suppressed with the SOCOM 5.56 RC2 by Surefire. Let's see how it runs here. Now notice we are way over gassed. Brass is being launched in that direction, which is closer to the two o'clock, which means we're getting a lot of gas back. As far as the shooter's perspective goes, I'm, I'm actually not crying or have, you know, a bunch of gas in the face. So that's pretty good. So it runs well. I assume as we only get heavier, it's only going to get better. Let's move on to the H buffer. We got the H buffer loaded up 3.8 ounces. Let's see how that feels now. Brass is still being thrown over gas. Recoil feels fine, but I do have a little bit more weight at the end of the gun. As far as what's felt recoil coming back into the shoulder, minimal. Feels good. H2 buffer, 4.6 ounces. Five shots suppressed. So they're starting to come a little bit, but we're not there yet. The H2 is what comes standard on the Geisley, but if you want to suppress it, maybe going H3 is going to be just right. Let's find out. It's three buffer, 5.1 ounces. Let's see if that trajectory of our brass changes.
The first time I missed too. Gosh, that's rough. Anyway, I do want to say though that the ejection looked to be a little bit more at my three o'clock, at least from my peripheral. So that's pretty sweet. But is the H4 going to be perfect? 6.8 ounces out of the H4 buffer. Let's see how this one does. Perfection. The H4 and this rifle length system, so our, I shouldn't say rifle length, sorry. Geisley has their own intermediate type of gas, gas length. It's a little bit longer, a tad longer than a mid-length gas system, but shooting it suppressed with that heavier buffer feels great. And on top of that, notice where our extraction is on the, for the brass. Right where we want it, anywhere between that three to four o'clock, three to 4.30, somewhere in that area. If it's shooting out in front of you, that means you're over gas. If it's shooting out way behind you, you're gonna have the potential short stroking and uh, under gassing. Right in that area, right, right over there, perfection. All right, now let's see how this works. Uh, see how these buffers work in my Mark 18. We've got the carbine length system in the Mark 18 now, 10.3 inch barrel. Let's see how this runs. Well, uh, we're definitely shooting out more that direction from what I could tell, so we are over gas. Let's move on to that H buffer. We've got now the H buffer in here, 3.8 ounces. Let's see how it runs. So noticing it's coming back a little bit, felt recoil feels good. I mean, it's a shorty 5.56 gun, so it's obviously gonna have a little thump to it, but as far as felt recoil goes, I've also got a lot of crap on here that weighs it down. It feels really good. So what more can I say? But let's see how the H2 runs in it. H2 buffer, 4.6 ounces. Let's see where that brass is shooting out this time and that felt recoil. That's right where I want it. I'm gonna be very surprised once I throw the can on this where we're gonna be shooting with the H2 because I have a feeling it's gonna still be way on over there. We've got the H3 buffer, 5.1 ounces. Let's see where we're at now. Feels good, looks like my extraction's still right on point. Really curious how the H4 is gonna work. Let's do it. H4 buffer, 6.8 ounces, let's see it. A part of me's thinking maybe I should've been running H4 this whole time, but here's my thought. Once this gun actually really starts to get dirty, starts to get fouled up, then I might not be as reliable with it because then it might have too much resistance, kind of like what I was talking about before. It might have too much resistance to actually reliably cycle. Let's put the can on it and see what happens. The RC2 is on, carbine buffer back in, three ounces. Ooh, here we go. So they're going more of an angle instead of like out. That's kind of funny, but it's definitely over gassed. So H buffer's next. 3.8 ounce H buffer. Feels slightly better than the uh, carving. I could actually notice it that time. That's kind of interesting. Uh, but extraction is, well, still overgassed. H2's next. 4.6 ounce H2. There we go. Good. And still slightly overgassed. What I'm also wondering too, as we increase the weight of the buffers, at what point will they fail to, fail to actually lock the bolt back on the last round? I might not have time to explain that one today. We might need to do a part two of this. We'll see. H3, 5.1 ounce. Still over gassed. That thing is still being launched that way. As far as the felt recoil, feels the same about the H2. Not much of a difference there. I'm really excited for this H4 though, because that might set everything up right. Now these older Mark 18s, I've had this one for about seven years now, tend to be gassy right out the back. I mean, right out the bat there. I mean, that's just how Daniel Defense made these to be exceptionally reliable. Add the suppressor to that, oh my God, it is very gassy. But again, with the addition of a heavier buffer, maybe slow things down, maybe get us the correct extraction. Let's see how the H4 does. H4 suppressed. 6.8 ounces. Still a little bit over gassed, which makes me wonder if I were just to empty this mag, we should still have a pretty reliable last round bolt hold open. So just for fun. Well, 
Looky there. So the H4 in this guy ran just fine. However, still noticing not as bad as the carbine and H buffer, but noticing I'm still getting a little bit of forward extract extraction. Closer to three o'clock, but not exactly where I want it to be. So there might be some other things I can do to this to try to get it right where I want it. But I have learned something today because I've just been running the H2 in this thing for the longest time. That's been very reliable for me. Maybe this H4 is something I'm gonna be sticking with. So interesting results. I mean, I really was not expecting, especially this rifle, to actually run with this 6.8 H4 buffer. I thought this was gonna to be too much weight for it to actually cycle reliably. That's not to say that there aren't H4 buffers out there that will prevent it from cycling, cycling reliably. Like, I don't know, I was talking about those pistol buffers that got out to eight ounces. Adding those two additional ounces to this guy would probably not work. One way to find out, I guess. Uh, but anyway, big shout out to PWS who actually provided the buffers today and again, Unlimited Ammo who provided the ammunition for today. So thank you guys because well, it's like people like you that make these little science experiments, uh, first of all, an option for us to be able to do and also fun. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section before. Did it kind of turn out as you expected or were you kind of surprised as well? In my mind, I kind of figured that we would have the carbine buffer, the three ounce guy, uh, the lightest guy also be the one that gave us the most dramatic extraction forward of the shooter, but also too, a little bit more felt recoil. One thing that was very surprising to me was I thought I would have noticed the recoil difference between each buffer a lot more than I actually did. Maybe it's just because I'm very used to the 556223 cartridge and its recoil and how it feels. And if maybe if I were to jump, like I said before, straight from carbine to H4, I would get that feeling more instead of having that minimal difference built up over a period of time. But I don't know, didn't really feel like that much of a difference. But the biggest difference, the one that was actually visible was the operation of the gun and the extraction and the trajectory of the extraction of that spent brass. So make sure your gun's not over gassed. What that can do to over a period of time, that's just a additional wear and tear on your firearm. Granted, like I've said before, I've had this gun for about seven years with thousands of rounds through it, and I'm actually still running uh, OEM parts. Gas chamber, or sorry, gas tube, barrel, uh, bolt carrier, and all of the bolts are all uh, original. Even the spring, the buffer spring. The only thing that I replaced is once I started suppressing this guy, a majority of the time I threw an H2 buffer in there. But now just for testing and to, to maybe give you guys some feedback on our Instagram, Classic Firearms Official. Um, I'll do live streams every now and then with Katie and we'll hang out some. But maybe I'll actually start running the H4 buffer in here run a couple more hundred, if not thousand rounds to it and see if we actually do have a reliability issue over a period of time. I think that's kind of fun. Anyway, again, let me know what you guys thought down in the comment section below. And one other thing too that we really didn't talk about are piston driven guns. Since PWS actually provided the buffers, let me know if you would think running one of their guns, a piston driven gun that also has an adjustable gas system in it, Let's see if we can fine tune that to find the perfect settings and buffer weights for a suppressed and unsuppressed PWS. And also they have different barrel lengths as well that we can try. So all sorts of stuff, all sorts of content coming your guys way. And if you're not subscribed, get subscribed because we're gonna keep coming out with videos like this. And if you're not notified, get notified. Hit that little bell down below to be notified when we come out with all of this awesome content, or at least I'm having a good time. If you're having a good time, let me know if you're not go away I guess but anyway I'll leave it off there hey if you're not familiar with us here at Classic Firearms we like to give away guns but we're also your one-stop shop for all of your second amendment need wants joys and gifts and everything else that you could think of when it comes to the shooting sports and exercising your second amendment right so head on over to our website www.classicfirearms.com to well check out all of the options we have available to you and also get your entries in for this Geisley that you see here today this is the 40 millimeter green super duty rifle by Geisley with the angled foregrip the <laughs> the Aimpoint Pro I am a big fan of this optic. Also one of Geisley's, Geisley's trigger, the B5 stock, and one of these Lancer mags. It's our St. Patrick's Day giveaway, hence why it's all green. Oh, and since, you know, in traditional fashion, a pot of gold, Unlimited Ammo is also providing a thousand rounds of 223 for the giveaway. So if that's not worth it, I don't know what is. Classicfarms.com is where you can get your entries. Utilize the code word luck to get yourself a couple hundred extra entries. I'll leave it off there and see you guys down in the comments section. God bless, and we'll see you soon at classicfirearms.com.